Welcome back to another episode where best-selling author and trial lawyer Shane Reed shares his best tips, tricks, and insights to becoming a better trial lawyer. This is episode three of three, which means if you haven't seen the previous episodes, then we gotta catch you up to speed, so I'll provide links to those previous episodes down below in the description for you to check out. And as always, links to resources, Shane's books, and Shane's website so you can reach out to him will be provided in the description below. And finally, if you find yourself enjoying this video, then be sure to hit the like button down below. Doing so helps keep the YouTube algorithm happy, which allows us to rank higher, to reach more people, and ultimately help more people. That's always the goal. But with all of that out of the way, I hope you enjoy this episode with Shane Reed. What I see a lot, especially on emails coming in through the Law Venture community, how do I overcome, as a lawyer, the fear of public speaking? I think the key is to know that everyone has it. Mark Twain had this great quote. He said, there are only two types of public speakers, those that are afraid and those that are liars those that are afraid and those that are liars. So Mark Twain, you know, 150 years ago, knew this truth. Mm -hmm. And the reason it is true is because it's part of our evolution. That there's a part in our brain that thousands of years ago made us very safe. And that is when eyes were set upon us, whether uh, other humans or animals out in the wild, our brain reacted and knew that it had to send adrenaline to all our big muscle groups mm -hmm. so that we could fight this uh, attacker or run as fast as we could for safety. The same thing is happening now when we get up to speak. Eyes are on us and we immediately turn into this fight or flight syndrome. And we've all heard of it. But it's kind of good to know why it happens. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of ways to overcome it. First, just be aware that, hey, I'm nervous. That's natural. And now I'm going to get through the door of nervousness to the other side where I can be persuasive. The two best ways to do that are one, physiologically, just start breathing deeply, slow, deep breaths, about five or 10 breaths before you get up to speak. Physiologically, that will calm the adrenaline that is coursing through your body. If you're anxious the day before, same thing. Take mm -hmm. a few deep breaths. Second, you've got to practice. I, I once heard this great uh, comment that said, if you haven't practiced, really, what do you have to be confident about? I think the reason a lot of us are not confident in court when we speak is we just haven't practiced enough. Mm -hmm. So take that effort to practice, do the deep breathing, and a third tip, would be to visualize some success. So how do you do that? Brian Stevenson, one of the great civil rights attorneys in the country, he was featured on Just Mercy, a Hollywood movie that came out two years ago. And I was speaking with him about you know, how he overcomes his nerves. You know what he does? He's before the Supreme Court of the United States all the time. Mm -hmm. He still gets there the day before to watch how the court is interacting with the lawyers so he gets relaxed. So when he goes in the next day, he's not seeing it for the first time in a few weeks or a month or a year. Yeah. Hey, I was in here yesterday. So what? This is the, the big uh, room. I've been here. I've seen it interact. And that does so much to relax you. I, I do that still every time I, I go to court, even if it's in front of the same judge. I've been in front of a, a week before. I'll go in early that morning just to see other lawyers there and go, okay, this will be fine. That's great. That's great. And I don't want people watching this to assume that this is an uncommon thing to happen to lawyers because lawyers are expected to be able to have great public speaking skills. I'll be the first to admit that, I mean, it's the anticipation of the argument that probably makes me the most nervous. But once I start going, I might my anxiety goes away, but simultaneously what I've noticed, there are times where my adrenaline is just pumping and I try and pick up a pin and my hand's shaking just from like the adrenaline that's going on. So trying to more not keep my public or my anxiety at bay, but just center myself as much as possible. And so what I've done is what you've recommended is I've gone to new venues where I may have a new case that is set for trial. And I, and I call them up and I say, hey, when is your next trial? I just want to sit in on it. 
and s I sat in on you know the the entire trial or the board dire just to get a sense of like here's my environment here's the judge now I can see the judge and I can see how the judge is handling certain things and getting that that exposure therapy so to speak in order to find that center um, that I'm looking for. I like all those ideas. Another thing you can do, you talked about kind of the adrenaline with your shaking pin. If you'll exercise the morning of your presentation or the trial and really get a lot of that energy out, it'll go a long way towards relaxing you. And I found that has been very helpful for me and others as well. So get some of that energy out uh, in another way so that you are more relaxed. That's great. I actually started doing that recently and <laughs> notice, notice the benefit. We have a Peloton and it's like, once you have a Peloton, there's no excuse to not get a little bit of cardio in when you need to burn some energy. And so I've been, I've been testing that out and I had a pretty important, like a pretty big hearing. I think it was a certification hearing, um, later that afternoon and I was as mellow and as calm as can be. I was just like, I was like, man, I need to be arguing like this all the time. So re-upped my subscription to uh, to Peloton as a result. Good. Of that. So, okay, Shane, how can people find you? I'm going to provide links down below, but can you orient them so they can um, track you down and, and ask you some more questions? Right. So I'd be happy to follow up with anyone out there. Uh, they can go to my website, which is down below. Uh, email me. I uh, Jared, will that link be in there as well? I can put it. Yeah. Yeah. So put my, I'll put my email there. I think uh, on a weekly basis, I send out a newsletter. It's very short. It's free. comes in your email. It's got two litigation tips uh, and one inspirational quote. And that link will also be down there. So that's a good way to stay engaged. In addition to what you're doing with uh, law venture here with Jared, it's just another resource and a different opinion. If you want to get more connected. Totally. And Shane, what I, respect about you most is I can just tell you're such a student when it comes to all this. I mean, just in this hour that we've been talking, you're, you're quoting and citing all these other people. And that comes from, you know, really loving what you're doing and wanting to be that forever student. And so that's something that I admire and respect. And so people who are wanting to learn more and elevate your, your trial skills, See, if, see it all boil down. I'm pretty sure a lot of what's going on in Shane's brain right now are in these books. So definitely check those out. Well, Jared, thank you very much for having me. And I also appreciate what you're doing, reaching out to people, because I think there's so much to learn and we don't get that enough in law school. And I think what you're doing is great. And I hope I've been some help today. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Shane.